this, this.
Um, a welcome, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to our Heartland 15 game versus Canary Development 15 game here at the scenic and serene uh, Meath and Rugby Club uh, under the foot of Mount Hutt. Uh, the last of the season snow just just holding on underneath, uh, on top there, sorry. So, uh, yeah, lovely day out here at Miffin. They've really turned it on for us. The, uh, the ground is looking a picture. Um, we're just up the road from the land of the Twisted Faces. We're just inland from the biggest mental asylum without offence. And we're just south of the people with two heads. So we're right in the sweet spot, right in the land of milk and honey. And, uh, yeah, very, very happy to be here in Miffin. Um, with me today, we've got um, the very talented, um, very single, very available uh, mid Canterbury Player of the Year, Sam Pierce. Piercey, thanks for being here, mate. Oh, thanks for the invite. Felt privileged last night when you flicked me a message. Yep, no, it's a real treat to have you here. Just offering your insight, obviously. Um, been exposed to both the Heartland 15 players and a uh, fair bit uh, of the Canterbury development players. So it'll be good to good to have you along. Um, this is an important fixture. Um, obviously, the Heartland 15 is uh, the pinnacle, I suppose, of, of grassroots rugby, and it's very prestigious to be uh, to be picked in the side. And the fact that these sorts of things are still happening is, is awesome. And it's followed a, a competitive Heartland competition, which saw South Canterbury victorious for the third uh, time in a row, which I believe is a record, uh, a marvellous achievement, obviously. And it, uh, Nigel Walsh coaches South Canterbury, obviously. Fairly enough, uh, rewarded for um, that by Ping Pictures, uh, the Heartland coach, and he's also obviously selected uh, a reasonable contingent of South Canterbury players, which is again understandable. But um, before we get too far down the track, um, we can go through two starting 15s if you like. Um, Sam, do you want to go take us through the Canterbury development side? Yep. Uh, first, we've got Liam Pratt at the one. We've got number two here, James James Mullen. Number three, Carisbrook to Umalatai. At four, we got Tumama to Ulua. Number five, Jaden Saar. At six, Johnny Lee, the captain today. And at seven, we got Joe, the power tailor. Eight, George Reeves. And at nine, we got Nick Shearer. Ten, Jack McLeod. Eleven, Cam Rawlings. Twelve, Dawson Smith. Thirteen, Tynan Stowers Smith. Fourteen, Curtis McDonald. At fifteen, we have Isaac Hutchinson. 16, Nick Hyde. At 17, Ben Alexander. 18, we have Josh Duckworth. 19, we've got Connor Smith. 20, Jack Coulthard. 21, Joel Lamb. 22, Terence Graham. And 23, Josh Galton. Thanks, Sam. And for the Heartland 15, uh, an elusive prop, we've got Tukumata Ata Akatava from South Canterbury. We've got Connor Anderson at Hooker. Uh, Tyler Kearns from the West Coast at Tidehead. We've got Caleb Foote from the King Country in the second row with um, Peter Travis Hay Horton, which is two double barreled names uh, and one single name, which you don't see very often, so that's outstanding. Going to have a lot of fun saying that today. Uh, blindside, we've got Doug Horrocks, also from Whanganui, making his debut alongside his uh, Whanganui teammate there at Lock. We've got, at seven, we've got young Finley Joyce from South Canterbury, also on debut. And number eight, from North Otago, we've got junior Pakatao Fafita absolute monster with ball in hand so looking forward to some barnstorming runs from Junior and number 9 and wearing the skiffer's armband for the Heartland 15 is Willie Wright from South Canterbury um, I think from memory this is Willie's ninth game from uh, for New Zealand Heartland which makes him uh, very experienced as the team only usually plays 2 or 3 games a season so a hell of an achievement for Willie and he'll, he'll look to lead the team by example today at 10 also on debut Sam Briggs, Sam's Played for South Canterbury for a few seasons, but as a lone player. So this is his first year as a local player for South Canterbury. So he rightfully uh, earns his start at uh, running the cutter there at 10. At 11, we've got Simone Samiti from North Otago. At 12, we've got Bowler Fafita. 13, Shane Anderson uh, from West Coast. 14, we've got Fideli Malana Pagi from Wanganui on debut. And at 15, we've got Renata Roberts Tanana from Nati Peru. Uh, the bench is headed up by Leoponi Mopapisi from Bulla. 17, we've got Vaka Tayalanga from South Canterbury. At 8, we've got hometown hero and uh, local favourite Adam Fridge Williamson. At 19, we've got Keenan Tolmata from Poverty Bay. At 20, we've got Lonnie Tomahuni, who uh, is going to bring a hell of a lot of impact off the bench. Very exciting to see Lonnie uh, have a crack. Uh, 21, we've got Leroy Niels. 
from Thames Valley. 22 from, uh, we've got Dane Whale from Wanganui, another experienced New Zealand Heartland player. And uh, number 23, we've got Fletcher Morgan, also from the Swamp Foxes. So two uh, pretty uh, well put together sides, to, uh, Semi. Uh, looks like they've got a bit of a youth of mix, uh, sorry, mix of youth and experience. But some of those fellas on debut for the Heartland 15, uh, for example, aren't actually all that youthful. Um, I no, think Shane Anderson there, for example, he's uh, been around a wee while. Uh, very, very talented players, young Shane. Uh, played all over the world. Um, probably doesn't quite have the top end speed that he used to, but he's probably got a, a few injuries and about a thousand Winnie Blues to answer for that. So it's always going to take its toll. But you'd imagine that uh, between both coaches, that, you know, X's and O's and structure and strategy and everything like that probably would have taken a little bit of a backseat to connection and uh, understanding more so for a game like this, Sam? Yeah, you'd say that would have to be the case. They've only just really kind of got to get to this Heartland side, so wouldn't be too surprised if there's not a great load of um, of structure and gelling. But then again, you also have a whole lot of impact from the South Canary players, so it'd be interesting to see if they can bring some some kind of shape and leadership that way. But I know this Canary side here is quite a, quite a young team. There's, quite, there's about uh, four guys from uh, Maris Albion from the power station in there, so looking forward to seeing those guys go, and they're all quite young fellas as well as 13, Heinen Stale-Smith. I'd love to watch him have a run. He's a hard ball carrier, so it'd be pretty exciting to see him um, get into some holes and, and run at some people. So I think there's a lot of uh, exciting players out there to watch. So looking forward to it. Yeah, nice. And uh, another touch on there, a good representation for the Sydenham Club or, or the bus drivers, as they're affectionately known, across the Canterbury Development side. I think they've got four or five in there too, which I was thinking as we came up here is quite handy on a bus trip as such as the development side will be on because... Logistically, it saves on, you know, pain for a bus driver, for example, and then also you don't have to worry about too much about that 12-hour rule about getting the bus back in time. So the boys can have a hell of a lot of fun on the way home and just take turns with driving. Yeah, well, I'm surprised about um, there wasn't too many Limwood players. I know they've got their own bus up there. They keep it parked on the grounds, nice, pretty painted. So it's a shame not to see that out and about driving around. That's right. If they got Limwood players and Sydney players, they could just save, save a hell of a lot on costs. That'd be quite a team trip, wouldn't it? It certainly would, Sam. It certainly would. As the Canada development side, led by uh, Johnny Lee from the Lincoln University Rams, uh, come out to the field. Um, not too sure cost-wise which way they'll be going. But, um, yeah, it'd be very exciting to see these two teams go at it. It's always nice seeing the red and black colours. Don't they just look great? They do, Sammy. They do, mate. Yeah. Quite a long way for them to walk, though, isn't it? It is. It is, yeah. Here we are. Lovely facilities here at the Methodist Rugby Club, though. Um, home of recent All Black Dallas McLeod. Obviously cut his teeth out there on, on the number one when he had a tackle and, and all that stuff. And also home to other um, hometown heroes like uh, Sir Wayne Timpson and uh, Woozer Wishawood. Um, two of the all-time greats from Miffin. As Willie Wright is uh, leading the Heartland 15 out in the foreground. Um, two sides making their way out to the field. Breeze today isn't huge, going to be a huge factor. Um, as we, camera looks at the field there, it's probably going across the field more than anything. It's a bit of an easterly coming. So, But uh, camera won't show. There's a good hedgerow in behind the field there, so it'll be relatively sheltered, I would have thought. Um, coming here today, so yeah, conditions are uh, pretty much perfect out here at the land of milk and honey. One of the real highlights here, Sammy, of the, for the boys in the Heartland 15, obviously a huge honour to be selected, but also um, being able to do, do the haka. Uh, New Zealand Heart team will, will always be something that will, will stay with the boys, you'd imagine. Yeah, something that's, um, that brings brings a whole lot of passion and I think everyone enjoys doing one as well as facing one. I think it brings a whole lot of energy. It just creates a whole different atmosphere around the game. I faced a few before throughout school huckers like first 15 and I don't know, it just brings a different type of energy that I've... It's, it's hard to replicate without one, really. Have you faced many in your time? Not many, Sam. Have you done one? That's something I'd love to see.
passionate stuff there from New Zealand Heartland 15. Looks like referees are, are making their way to the middle now. Just be a couple of moments away from the off by the looks. Yeah, referee um, Jackson Hinshaw from South Canterbury. Picking us underway soon. So like Kennedy Development Day will be kicking off. Number ten there, Jack McLeod. So number ten for the Sydenham. He part of the winning side a couple of seasons ago. Was underway here at uh, Rugby Club. Taken in there by Robert Panano, who gets a great clearance away. Gets into touch nicely there. The job just play back up towards the 20 uh, the 10 metre line, New Zealand Heart Territory. James Mullen here on every side. Lines up the line out. It looks like they're going for a five man for a start. Be a great first case to see how these guys' case is really starting to take place. Um, all goes to five. Here, finds George Reeves in the midfield, sets it well. Play rolls around the corner again. The mama, tough carry. Shearer there to Smith. Carries well, presents it well for Shearer. Here for Dan Sarr, Shirley Vikings club. Oh, was over the ball. Connor Anderson from South Canterbury making a nuisance for himself. And he's won himself with penalties. Done great work there, Sam. Very well done there. Good work from the young fella on debut. Gets them out of uh, trouble early here. Now they can uh, get, the, get the ball down the field and look for the pack. Development was building nicely there, so it's uh, a timely penalty. Uh, it'd be a good chance to see uh, uh, Sam Briggs, what he can carve off here. Very accomplished, very astute first five. Um, just the sort of player that you want in these sorts of situations. Knows what strings to pull, so um, it's a good kick up towards the 10 metre mark in Canterbury Development Territory. It looks like we've got another short line out here, Sammy. Yeah, they're slowly walking into it now, but yeah, it looks like another five man. Five man walk in, the heart on side. Oh, and that's one. oh they've got, got the ball back through there, the ball came down and... Yeah, Johnny Lee got up, but the Heartland have got it back. And there he is, the tough feeder, good carry. Ball presented there for right to Briggs. Cut out to Anderson, pressure's good there. They were up quick on him out there, weren't they? Curtis McDonald, I think, on the right wing. Good ball there from Wright. Finds Tyler Coons. Right again, Briggs. There's Caleb Foot from the King Country. Available. Right, bit of a fumble. Gives the Canterbury defence a chance to get up. For Fafita, always a good option to get out of trouble. Bowler for Fafita. Briggs takes on the line himself. Showing what he can do there. Oh, over the ball quickly there, though, was Joe Taylor, but he's just been cleared out there nicely. Joe the power probably couldn't quite on that. Roberts Tanana, pill. wide pill. Bounces once into the, straight into the hands of Siamoni. Tomote, and he's oh, proven just... himself very difficult to tackle. Oh, there's got to be, there's a trouble here for next year, Try I think. there, I reckon. Oh. Yeah, you could argue if uh, the TMOs on Saturday were involved, from set or Sunday morning were involved. Very good chance that it was going to be a penalty try. Oh, they would have called him back 10 more metres to that breakdown. Yeah, there's a yellow card. So, oh. Canterbury development under in uh, strife early. Next year, didn't have too many other options there. There probably would have been a try, but hindsight's a great thing. Probably should have called it. Yeah, it was one of those things. I mean, look how dangerous he was. He definitely didn't want to tackle him. No, uh, it's true. Made a business decision there, went for the ball. So, yep. I yeah. wouldn't blame him, to be honest. As Briggs puts it into the corner, we've got a full line out. Pretty straightforward option here for the Heartland 15. Tuck it under a wing and see if we can get a rolling mall try. Comes up, in. Up good goes. so far. Finley Joyce at the front of the line out there. Starting well, to push this Canterbury team back here. They've just kind of met with another strong force. Well set though, Sam. As they roll around the end there. Oh, you know what That's uh, just great defence on that ball there. They just got in early, got a good shunt on, sot them where they could and just broke down and eventually got the ball. Yeah, you and I both know we've got no idea what actually happened then. No, I'm just trying to sound like <laughs> <a bit. laughs> Yeah, the malls and mall defence. 
the dark arts. But anywho, relieving penalty there. Disappointing there for the Heartland 15. Opportunity to strike. Um, and they didn't quite grab it. Both teams getting quite close now. And, uh, just costly penalties costing them a shot at maybe five points. Development still under a little bit of pressure though. Just outside their 22. James Mullen lines up another five men. Doesn't get up that high, but it's effective there for Johnny Lee. They hit another midfield pod. Gary in the midfield here. See how he's going to go here with Jack McLeod going into half. See how he can organise things. Yeah, that's all right. A little bit of space out wide. Oh. Hutchison has on. Met with a strong force of Finlay Joyce. Joyce doesn't miss. He hits and it sticks. Hit there by Patalfa Feeder and foot together. So putting a bit of pressure on here are the Heartland 15. That, that Dawson Smith in there I getting involved. So. Yeah. Um, Alpha has gone early there, but Hutchies are okay with it. Nice clearance. Got the ball down quite quite far. Let's see if they can counterattack from here. Roberts Renato shapes the kick, but then decides to have a wee dig. Pops it off the deck, and Willie Wright's right there to go. On and Anderson. Anderson's oh, oh, he's thrown it. God, straight to him. And we've got Curtis McDonald there with a ranging run. Ball available there. Again. So we one off runner. McLeod goes over the top here. McLeod with a bit of a boxy. Find some grass. Hutchison's chasing that. Gonna get there in time. Just goes over the dead ball line. Just a little bit too many wee picks this morning there for, for Jack McLeod. Good wee passes there for both sides though. Both teams looking to have a give the ball some air, play some footy, which is what you want. Obviously with not a huge amount of time to give it. You really um, want to have a crack, Timmy, don't you? Give the ball a bit of air and have a wee exhibition of footy. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of what you can't really... Those things you can't control, the bounce of the ball, you try to make the most of all that if you can't really get into shape and get everything going. Try to leave it up to God, as they say. Potentially, Sam. Leave it up to Jesus. That's right, Jesus. Anyway, reasonably good attacking position here for the Heartland 15. Um, close to midfield. In their own territory, uh, given, but... They do have that man extra. They are defending at, uh, at halfback there, so it's a good option here either side for, for Willie Wright and the Hartland 15. Just to see which way they go. First scrum of the game, too, as such. A little bit of pressure comes on, and enough pressure at the back comes on. I can tell for Fido, can't hold on. And something to note, um, Karasbuk Tor Malato actually represented mid Canterbury in the Hartland competition a couple, two or three years ago. He's uh, gone on to bigger and better things by representing Canterbury this season, which is awesome to see. By all accounts, not my area of expertise, but one of the most feared scrummages south of the Bombay Hills, Sammy. So, um, be an interesting battle for the purists between Formalatai and uh, Fakatava for the Hartland. I think. It, it Canterbury, will be. Canterbury Development get their, their own chance to attack. Again, with numbers down, it'll be interesting to see how development have a, uh, attack this, but good position. Good solid scrum development. Glad to... Oh, it's a nice set-piece move there. Gets the ball into the ball out in space. It's been quite rapid all season, really, when he gets into his, uh, into his element, gets his wheels moving. Number here from Gary over the game line. Clean ball. He's just coming off nine here, PSC. Just a little bit of one, three, three, one off nine as we switch back. Lovely we play. That's Reeves is out back. They're quite quick with the ball, this Canterbury team. They are. They're getting good clean ball, as we say that. It's one bit messy, but still available. Jayden, commentator's curse, really, isn't it? Jaden Saar. Anderson trying to be a bit of a nuisance again. There. Mullen. We show and go. Bends the line. Number 22's come on the field, so that's Terence Graham from the Sumner Club. Ride the wave. What they say, isn't it? Yeah. McDonald again. Gets it stripped, but backwards there from Shane. Oh, no, knock on from Shane Anderson. Again, reasonable bits of play from both sides, Timmy. Good attack, good, good recycling, but uh, defence from Hartland 15 holding well. Yeah, we just did notice that Terence Graham was on. We're not quite sure who he is on for, but... Making substitutions purely. Wonder whether or not Hutchinson's gone off. Potentially while the um 
up by McLeod at oh, 10. I think it's uh, Stow Smith is off. Ah, right. I haven't seen that red head here moving around. Like a wee tape job there for Umama Uoala. From the Sydenham Club, but Umama also turned out for the West Coast this season in the Heartland competition as a lone player and was part of a pretty formidable type five that uh, did a fair bit of damage across the competition, which led to the West Coast winning their first ever title, I think, the Lahore Cup, which is uh, no mean feat. And I'm sure those boys uh, had a pretty big Sunday, Monday and more than likely Tuesday. Not that there's a hell of a lot to do on the coast anyway, so they might as well keep going. <laughs> might as well just make it a little bit more enjoyable over there. That's all right. No, nah, lovely part of the world. Part of the world. When you're drunk. Anyway, uh, looks like it's a uh, yeah, development ball here following the knock-on from Anderson and the attempted strip and the tackle. It's seven or eight metres out by the looks of that. There they are. Solid base. Comes out to the left. We taxi. Again, they like that back door play. They do like the release, but it's been read well by Anderson. Support Graham. But quick, the ball's there, the ball's available. Cloud's getting into it. Now the forwards are going to get into their work and roll up their sleeves by the looks of it. Maybe look to suck in a few Heartland defenders in the line. Just fill them off their feet. Slam Pratt from the Uni Ram. They're going to carry it. Barnage with the penalty, got offside. You're interesting what they decide here. Will they take the three being a man down, or will they just kick it out and go for a wee drive? Not quite sure. Yeah, it's a tough one. Head says kick it, kick the three. Heart says go for the corner oh, and keep playing. Following their heart there. Yeah, fair enough too. They're here to play. Let the boys play. Yeah, so the offside call came from assistant referee George Horsball. One of the top referees doing the doing the rounds in Christchurch rugby. Got full line out here by the looks of things for the development team. Their opportunity now to turn the screws and tuck it under an arm and see if they can rumble it over. Yeah. <coughs> Show these older boys how to do it. Reeves goes up. Set nicely. Bit of a fumble there, but Mullins on the ball now. Making steady progress. They're moving all right. They are. And the referee's got his arm out, and he's awarded a penalty. And it's not a penalty, it's a try. <laughs> awarded a try. It wasn't quite as upright as normal, though, was it? It was no, a little bit on the... I think he might have had an old shoulder. In yeah, the right. Those left one's a bit dicky, you think. Yeah. Anyway, there. was that a try to James Mullin? I think it could have been the hooker. I'm honest, I was looking at the ref's arm. I wasn't going to put the ball down. <laughs> anyway, the Canary Development 15 are rewarded for, for going for the five points. Rewarded for a bit of audacity. Here's which is uh, awesome. Here's Graham in there talking about kick. He, um, a few years back, it was Maris three, three years ago now. Maris versus Sumner in the final. He scored all 22 points in that game. Won, that the, right? won the Colts final for the boys. That's impressive. This is quite a stat. Something you'd tell everyone, wouldn't it be? Absolutely. Hell of a return. But he's not kicking today. Obviously offering a few tips here to Jack McLeod. Yeah, that's what I, all I saw. With the Kennery Development 15, uh, a first on the board. 12 minutes gone here in the, in the first half. He struck that well, and it's right between the horns. Good been result. That little bit of a uh, little bit of words of wisdom got that over. Must have been. Must have been Terence Graham and whispering sweet nothings in his ear. So the development fifteen have done very well here to go seven up, seven nil up uh, with the man in the bin. Um, the Heartland fifteen shouldn't be too disheartened though. They've played some good code. Just need to keep that foot down and keep applying that pressure as Briggs goes deep. 
Finds Reeves in the 22. Anderson with the hit on with Kearns over the ball. Cleaned out there effectively enough, though. Ball back here for Charlton. It's got a bit, plenty of time. Finds a good tuck. Billy Wright goes quickly, though. They're here to play, aren't they? They are. As they shift it, two pass. Briggs with the ball in hand on the far side. He finds Fafita. Threw him in really well That's there. Great work. And Fafita's in open space, and that is a frightening prospect trying to stand in front of me. He gets it off the deck very well. Oh, he's out of Renata. nowhere. That's a great oh. line. What a try. And the Heartland 15 strike straight back. That's great footy. Put some pace on the ball there. Went straight through. No one even saw him coming. Counter, counter attack footy at its finest. Outstanding work there from the Heartland 15. A lot of credit needs to go there to Sam Briggs. Ball in two hands. We outside line. Yeah, Reminds he... me of a, wee, a young Jimmy Gopeth. The way he took that line on. A young Jimmy Gopeth or even a, even a young Sam Pierce maybe. Oh, Word no. on the street. No, I think. I think. <laughs> Yeah, so Briggs done beautiful work there to put uh, Fafita in the hole and then Fafita barnstorming run, gets him on the front foot and then Roberts Renata from the back fence. Impressive stuff. So the Heartland 15 struck right back. This is what we want to see. We want to see some running footy. So Briggs here lining up the conversion. 10 metres to the right of the sticks. And he's iced it. So they draw level. 7-7 seven, seven here. That could mean... Must be pretty close to that yellow card coming back, Timmy. Yeah, I'm waiting to see this. Be nice to see Jack McLeod back out at 10, controlling the guys. They just seem to be running off nine a lot. There's no one out the back. McLeod picks us off. Goes deep himself. Finds Briggs. Got plenty of time. Oh, good look touch to me. Uh, I think it was, yeah. The touch, he's got his arm up. So he didn't have as much time as he thought. And yet, Shearer is back on the field. So it looks like the Canterbury Development 15 are returned their full complement. And the, the Heartland 15 have the ball back near the halfway line. Good quick line out. Joyce gets up. All the way here. The uh, Horrocks, I think that is. It was. It was a great and, carry yeah. there. Get them set. Good carry. Another wee cheeky wee pick and go there by... Fafita. Ball available for right. We behind ball to Fafita. Goes straight wide here to Alana Fagi. They've been in the line nicely here of the Heartland 15. Will right, right, Knight. Goes. Finds a great gap and gets the ball off beautifully to Joyce, who finds Roberts Renata in a great support line. And he's done it again. Oh, he's Brilliant back. finish. Unreal. Two tries in about two minutes if you're there for him. Excellent work there from the Heartland 15. Spreading the development side's uh, defences very, very well, getting to an edge, bending the line, and then Willie Wright showing all his experience in class, sniping around the edge. Great support line from Finlay Joyce, the South Canterbury connection, and then Roberts Renata just has a nose for it. Can't keep him out of it, Sammy. No. Like a dog to a jar of peanut butter, really, isn't he? It is, mate. Very impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, a brilliant try. Great opportunity taken there from the heart 15. Coach Nigel Walsh will be will be wanting to see. Must be a, a bit of an injury here. So, James Mullen there. Just getting a bit of tape over the boot, which does absolutely nothing, but looks good. Bit of a tougher kick here from the Briggs. Um, right on the right-hand touchline there. But is this favourable side? No, the other side is, isn't it? I'm not quite sure. I'm a left foot kicker. So I'd probably be the opposite side of, of myself. Yeah, you're My favourable side is you're out not, in front. You're not a very good kicker either, so you're the wrong person to ask. <laughs> Strikes it well. Hutchies weren't happy with that one. Not no quite. flags up. Waved it away. So the Heartland 15 lead by 12 points to 7. Two excellently taken tries. Both the Roberts to Nana.
to McLeod to get us underway again. Goes a little bit shorter this time. A foot takes it nicely. Thought Hutchinson was going to jump up for that. He just ended up overrunning it. Ball here for Anderson. Good shot there from Liam Pratt and Mullen together. Double shoulders, which you want to see defensively. We outside line, but it gets finished off there nicely by the development side. All the way to Briggs to give us an old Gutty Owen, which is a stinker. And it doesn't work out at all. Yeah, Reeves, Canterbury here yeah. is on attack. Canterbury Reeves here with the ball. Good field position. Joe the, power. Joe the power. Taylor with good bit of footwork there. Provides it nicely for Shearer. Away to McLeod. Missed ball there to Mullen. Try to cross the face of Pratt. Tape on the boot must have helped. He's getting involved everywhere. That's it, mate. Wonder what all does wonders. Formalatai here with a good carry off nine. Switching back again. Pratt releasing out to McLeod. Wide ball read very well by Samulti, but he can't ice it. Available here for Char Arthur Graham, sorry. Gets collared there by Put. Getting to a power load of work as the King Country lock. Oh, the ref just had enough of that here. Go back to that uh, that knock on. He was almost away there. I thought he uh, read that well. Just couldn't get his hands low enough by the looks of that. That's right. He just he just missed the opportunity, but it was a good read. Again, good scramble defence there from the Heartland 15. They're under a little bit of pressure after that uh, clearance kick was uh, pure dog tucker. Um, so they've done well to, to hold out. But a great attacking opportunity now. Straight after points for, for the Canterbury development side. As we go to halfway through the first half. I think their set piece has been going quite well for them here. Canterbury would have been nice to have all their players out there running it. But it's been looking pretty good when they get the ball. They do that back door and they get wide. But see yeah, what they've got in store this time. So right, with a full compliment, they might... Uh, they might have a real red hot crack here, which you'd like to see, Sammy. Wouldn't mind know, knowing the difference in weight of these scrums here. There's some real big boys for that Harland team. Yeah. Cloud oh. just has a crack himself, takes on Briggs. Now Briggs does a good job though, but it's available there quickly for Shearer. Ends big. off his opposite, throws yeah. him to the floor. Big Hardy Savia dummy. Might be in a bit of trouble here, though. That's right. He got himself a little bit tangled up. Might argue that the Heartland team didn't roll away, but not how referee Henshaw saw it. And he awards the Heartland 15 for their tenacity at the breakdown. So another good clearing penalty opportunity here for, for Briggs. I think that comes just down to that poor execute off that scrum. Just first off carry by the 10, got isolated, and kind of turned into a bit of scramble there, and then ended up losing the ball, so... Not really a well executed play there. Correct. With that 10 off his feet, they didn't have uh, too many other people offering cheer options. The fellas got their way. But got a full line out here for the Heartland side. He goes to the back, does Anderson. Brings in Samolte. Good line and a good carry. Ball's Great available line. well for right. Great tackle there by Hutchie. Roberts again with the ball. He's looking dangerous out there. He wants a third. He's, he's going. got spiders on him. Oh, oh, no. There we go. The, the power, power Taylor the comes power across the top. Him. Had to get him from behind because no one's taking him from the front at the moment. Yeah, good good uh, meters made there from the Heartland 15, though. Great meters. Yeah, just off one line out there, all the way back down to the other end of the field. That's all right. Yeah, uh, it's uh, they look exciting with ball in hand to the Heartland 15. Willie Wright just giving his opposite there a bit of advice. Got plenty of advice to, to give as Willie. He's older than the hills. Older than Methuselah, they might say. So he's seen a few winters. I wouldn't trust anything he talks about here if he's uh, giving me advice, to be honest. Like it's fading at the top there. Nice. Hair care. Yeah. Yeah. The angle of the sun doesn't do it any 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 favours from this camera angle, does it, Sammy? No, not compared to Max. It's a bit of a bit of glare coming off, actually, now you mention it. Hopefully he's got sunscreen on it. The last thing he needs is to go in home tonight with uh, sunburnt scalp. Although, advice, sun, uh, sunscreen above the eyebrow is not great. It runs into, yeah, the, into the eyes. Yeah. So I've got to be careful about that. I can imagine. Oh, it shivers down my spine. So, Shearer here to feed the scrum. Oh, 
Oh. Got a free kick here for the Harland team. Short arm. He did a hand single signal which would intimate something about angle. Again, no idea. Absolutely no idea. Yeah. And to be fair, he probably doesn't either. To be, to be anyway, Heartland have uh, decided that they'll have a crack. So a great attacking opportunity here for the New Zealand Heartland 15. The uh, good, healthy crowd starting to build up. Getting close enough to 5 o'clock that... Uh, Feel the locals can knock off work. Yeah, school's out. There's a couple of younger kids running around. There's a game for all ages, really, isn't it? That's right, Sam. That's right. It's right. It's turned now to feed the scrum. First Heartland scrum, I think, in their position. Canterbury looked a you know, second Pushed one, isn't well it? That's right. But the Akatao for feed has done a great job. Made light work of Shearer and got right over the game line. Oh, the wee falcon, which you don't see often enough. And unfortunately, a double knock on there. Sorry, Coven, it was a whipper of a par. Was um, He just got in the way a little bit because that pill was meant for Fafita, I think. And it was on to get it wide as Fakatal Fafita had made great gains in and around that 10 channel off the scrum. So the scrum under a little bit of pressure for the Heartland 15, but um, they did good work for a start there anyway. A little bit of set piece to set piece at the moment, which is always a little bit of a drain. And we've had such good attacking rugby in between. Yeah, it can uh, slow the game down a little bit. So more of a midfield scrum now. Opens up either side here for the Canary side. Good solid base for Shearer. Very solid scrum there. Ah, here as we, we go. dart himself, as we show and go. On his feet here. Finds a bit of space and does a good job. He's men over the ball though. Horrox is making a menace. McLeod jumping in there again. Just chasing out here. Doesn't mind a wee box kick. Just oh, Robert oh. Stanana. Oh, oh, he almost came away with that. What could he do? It was almost magic. Everything he touches at the moment is almost coming off. So that would have been pretty special to see if he pulled that one in. But good attacking intent from the Nati Pro debutant. Good to see. Love it when players have a red hot crack, Sammy. Yeah, I love it when they're just having a great game. Everything they uh, seem to do kind of starts working for them. They get a bit more comfortable and their, their form starts showing. So it'd be great to see him later on in the game. It's all right, so. Scrum here. Near halfway for the development side. 15 metre line, by the looks of, or five metre, five metre line, even. By the looks of that. And while we wait for the scrum to set, big shout out to Shearmac Aluminium, who are giving us their offices today to host. Wi Fi at the grounds isn't so great, so we're just over the road as McLeod finds McDonald, I think, there parked up in the midfield. Yeah, they brought that winger right in field there. Another kick, they like going to the air. Yeah, they don't want to play too much footy between the two 10 metre lines. Not a bad nudge there from McLeod and great chase there from Rawlings. Put in the Heartland 15. Here. Put in the Heartland 15 under a hell of a lot of pressure. Wright gets back though. Maybe we crack it clear in this by the looks. Slow, messy ball, but they don't really want it fast at the moment. Finds Horrocks with a good carry. Opens up a better angle here for Briggs. Doesn't find touch though. He finds Hutchison on the full. He gets it out to McDonald straight away and he's got a lot of space in front of him. And he's got very here. small numbers in front too. But he's oh. come back in. He's bumped off one tackler. Looked like he had an open run there, but those big boys did a great job for Hartland, but it's still on. Here's, he's wrapped up, wrapped up there. I can tell Fafita with a great read on the release too. Not supporting his weight, I think. We'll be there ruling here. Yeah, again, great scramble from the Heartland 15 because, again, that kick probably, uh, in hindsight, uh, if they had their time again, probably would have put that out just to buy himself a little bit of time. But McDonald, with uh, a lot of small numbers in front of him, decided to cut back in. 
So, uh, yeah, the Heartland 15 have got themselves out a bit of trouble again. So, good to see here. McDonald, uh, sorry, McLeod going for the corner. Yeah, I think uh, Canterbury's seen a bit of space over the top there. I think the, the Heartland wingers are up quite flat, so he's looking to put one over and find a bit of grass. And like they did before, they're down here. They've got some good pressure going, so see if they can capitalise on it. They go quickly, and Saar gets up. Ball's at the back. Mullen peels off on his own. He gives a great ball there to Tormalatai. He gets hit over the top. Shearer is marshalling the troops. No one wants it, though. Yeah, again, just that lack of cohesion without uh, having played a huge amount of games together. Wright scrambles it out, and the Heartland 15 now got a chance to turn defence into attack. Oh, and look who it is out there. Tanana again. Roberts Tanana. Sets the ball there between the 22 and the halfway. Wright to Joyce. Joyce with a good carry. Just switched behind, but they keep going the same way to Briggs. Briggs is showing go on a step. Gets him behind. Go the power over the top, not on his feet. Yeah, bringing referee into the game. Fafita gets caught, but they've got the advantage, so they can have a bit of a crack here in the Heartland side. Wright gives it some air to Joyce. Good hands there by the looks of it with Horrocks, but referee's decided that uh, advantage will no longer apply. And he'll bring it back. Oh, nice bit of uh, ball play there by the ref. Ball came to him. Dealt with it nicely. Forms temporary, mate. Class is permanent. But Heartland uh, side have survived a bit of a scare there. And as we touched on, Percy, it just looked like uh, there was a little bit of a misunderstanding there off the ruck, uh, the Canterbury side, and no one was really sure who they were going to get it. And Heartland pounced. So they've done well to hold on. Yeah, it was now, a bit of a duck, duck, goose there. You saw the first two, duck, duck, and... At the third one, he's a goose. Silly old goose. Mm -hmm. But anyway, great opportunity there for Briggs to march it up the field a little bit. And as he's done that, he goes uh, well into Canterbury territory. Anderson here. Lines up, look like another five man. We walk in. Keep it nice and simple. Speed in the air sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a tempo they play that nowadays. They walk That's in, right. go quick. And we've got a release there from Horrocks. Wide ball from Vafita. And Panana gets a great pass away. Milan Thagi gets caught around the ankles but gets back up. They're in behind again with their width of the Heartland side. They're playing a great brand of footy. Katal Fafita again bending the line. Got his hands all over that ball there. Yeah, referees decided that uh, he wasn't in a good enough position and he hasn't let him go, let him play it. So Smith there. Dawson Smith from the Lincoln University Rams gets pinged. He's crucial 10 minutes. Before half time, PC. They call them the championship minutes. It'll be interesting to see what Skipper Woolly Wright decides to do. They've got a lead of five. Three points will give him eight. But, ah, it's good to see. Going for a drive. Have a dig. So Briggs lines up the kick to the corner and he gets it just five metres out. Had to see the ball boys onto it there. Yeah. We've got another full one, have we? We have. They go to foot down the back. He hits, finds Whakata for feet and they've set it nicely. They've got a roll on here. They get some, got the wheels moving in the engine room. Anderson gets there eventually. Development side are doing a reasonable job at the moment, though. Joe the Power Taylor is just holding off, but he hold, held off too long. Held off far too long. Not like him. Normally, he's the first one to have a dig. They've executed that quite well there. Nice drive, patience. Ref told them to use it. They knew what they were doing. Nice push. Yeah, excellent work for the debutant from South Canterbury, Connor Anderson. Brilliant work. Another wee uh, meat pie there for the Heartland side, and they're really making the opportunities count at the moment. After that one we misfire early, they are looking very, very well oiled, very cohesive unit. So, all credit to them. They deserve the 17 7 lead with the, with the kick to come. Briggs is taking this one a wee way back. Open up the angle a little bit more. It's just showing off, really. That's all right. Well, when you can do it, why not do it? Exactly. Rolling this one up. Always love a kicker's routine. Everyone's got a different one. 
Not much effort goes into it. Very natural, free-flowing style, and uh, he's made no mistake on that one. He's taken that out to a 12-point lead now, and uh, Captain Willie Wright gets rewarded for his confidence in his forward pack. So, crucial time there to score for Hartland. Now we get into the clinical stuff, the X's and O's stuff. They really want to nail this, ice this exit. Briggs takes it on the full. And he finds a, finds a reasonable touch. Again, though, he's very casual with that. He knows what he's doing. Doesn't put pressure on himself. Just nicely goes through his own motions there. It was one of those footy players that looks like he's got a lot of time, Sammy. A lot of time. It does. He does. Not many of them around the natural footy players like that. But anyway, five man here for the development side. Reasonable attacking opportunity. 40 metres out. Mullen goes deep. Reeves goes up, I think. I oh, know he's got the ball now. Can't have been in the line out. Briggs and Fakatal for feet to make the tackle. Round the corner comes to Mama. Good run. Ball available for Shearer. First chance that the development side have had for a while, and I think that uh, Fafita might have got himself a little bit high there. Go through the phases here. I think that's the best for them. Yeah. Foot's getting through a ton of work, a truckload of work. Under pressure there, though. Referee decides that uh, he'll come back. And the oh, no, offside. The cloud <coughs> goes quickly. Finds Shearer. Shearer finds Char uh, Graham. Pops it off the deck. Cloud goes over the top here. We've got Hutchison out in the corner. He's got to that. He got to the line. He certainly has. Referee oh. points to the spot, and that's a well-taken try. Very opportunistic to a degree, but well-deserved too. But nice it, work from that. I said them 10 there. He's just found space, and he's used it. He's been kicking all game, but at least this one hasn't found ground. It's found his man. Yep. Great opportunity taken there. Just shows how dangerous the Kennery development side are when they hold on to the ball for a, a, a couple of multiple phases there. So not ideal there for the Heartland side. A few phases on defence and they've, they've given up at least five points straight after scoring points themselves, which is a, a real coach killer. There's a couple horrible haircuts in that trailer, isn't there? There is. Still the hometown heroes there. As McLeod uh, lines up his kick, another kick here at goal. To break that 12-point uh, deficit, bring it back to five. Tough enough angle, though, PC. Yeah, I didn't see him get those uh, words of wisdom. Hopefully he can strike this one. True. You know, if he doesn't get it, what he needs for next time anyway. Yeah. He's sweet nothing's whispered in his ear, I think. Oh, Here it goes. On the right there. Just he didn't bring quite it bring it down enough, did he? Vanessa Martelli there. Yeah. Very cool for the Canterbury development players to have a player or of that calibre, that Martelli's calibre, in and around the coaching group. Just passing on uh, little wee nuggets of wisdom, which is awesome. So the Heartland 15 opportunity now to kick off. Four minutes left to go in the first half. Briggs again. Goes deep. Finds a little bit of ground. Ugly bounce. Hutchison has on somebody and does him. And then finds Reeves outside oh, him. Out there. They're running, running around here to burn. Have a dig. Hutchison's going to go himself again. Oh, what a oh. nut. Finds Re Oh, that's just outrageous. They're playing with it. He's in again. Just like that. The fullbacks are playing with each other here. We've got two minutes. Two tries and two minutes for the pair of them. That's a little bit of backyard footy for you. How good's that? Impressive to watch. Hutchison involved. Reeves involved. But pretty much between the two of them, they've done it all. He wouldn't think he was wearing eight, would you? No. Roman out there on the edge. Hutchison carrying on the form, which saw him uh, win the premier competition in Christchurch with Maris this season and also get selected uh, in the New Zealand under 20 side. So he's obviously one for the future there is Isaac Hutchison and yeah, by what we've seen in the last five minutes, he's certainly one to keep an eye on. A little bit of finishing for the first one, but uh, her of a lot of magic involved in that second one. So, just as we said, that ice in it from a kickoff, the Canterbury development go 80 metres and uh, bring us back within two points from the cloud to see if we can level it up. Well, they got themselves out of trouble. I saw the ball bounce twice. There's a bit of pressure. 
bit worrying there, but uh, they've, they've managed to get around them. But just a oh, piece of That comes in. No, oh, and again, same place. We're going to have to get some words to Terence Graham to make sure that, uh, for Canterbury development sake, anyway, that he just has a wee whisper every time he runs past before McLeod lines that up. So, New Zealand Heartland hold on to the lead here. Just 1917 with two minutes left to go in the first half. Briggs again. Shortens this one up a little bit. Chance to contest. Saar goes up, though, and he gets a great ball away to Reeves. Can't keep him out of the game. Oh, he's he's going to go himself. He's got the bounce, oh, too. That's an unbelievable bit of skill. Oh, stayed in play here. Oh, and who's that? That's Peter Travis. Hay Horton gets across and knocks it into touch. But it looked like Canterbury were going to go the, go the distance again. I know. I thought George Reeve wanted one of his own out there. Put the chip over, got the bounce. Nice covering there by Roberts Tanana. Got there. Managed to put a fair bit of pressure on him, take him out. Ball stays in play, though, and forces a wee knock on. We Heartland defeat this scrub. It's all right. The crowd certainly got their money's worth in this first half, Sammy. Good footy being played. Good tries being scored. So, Hartland 15's crumb's been under a bit of pressure. Wright puts the ball in. Going backwards, but they've done enough. He takes it over the half, uh, the touchline there, and referee Jackson Henshaw signals half time. Very, very impressive first half, Sam. Lots of good stuff been done. And uh, for two sides that have only just come together, there have been moments of uh, misunderstanding and a little bit of lack of cohesion, but overall, very, very impressive. It has been very impressive to watch, especially that both teams counter-attack are very dangerous to watch. Nicely, the, the ball, with two passes, get wide, get some space. So, uh, it's been great to watch. That's right. They've obviously, uh, both sides got some talented, talented players and open space is, is what they're looking for. So hopefully more of the same in the second half. Um, we'll go take a quick break for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll join you back shortly. Thank you.
And uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the pristine mountaineer here up here in the high veld. Um, something to take into account, I think, for the second half, Sam, is that uh, higher altitude that uh, we're playing under here in Miffin. Um, the air is just a little bit thinner. Obviously, there's a faint smell of um, dairy effluent on it as well, unfortunately, just uh, the way that winds are blowing from the, from the local dairy shed across the road. But, uh, yeah, something that both teams are going to have to contend with, and I think it's going to bring the benches into the game quite considerably in the second half, Sam. Yeah, I, I think variables like that are quite hard to control. I don't know if there's many players that can, that can prepare themselves for a game like that, having things like that. But uh, I definitely think those subs are going to have to come on soon. They've been sitting on the bench. They've been feeling it all. So. That's right. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see uh, the impact that those substitutions make and how the two sets of coaches uh, look to utilise them. Yeah. Both both sides with powerful benches. But I think if we reflect quickly on the first half, Sam, we've, uh, we've watched some pretty awesome rugby considering the circumstances. Uh, both teams will be pretty happy. Um, probably on either side, they'll probably look to shore up the defence a little bit, especially on kick chase as uh, Briggs gets us underway and he finds Shearer who, rather than give it to Reeves, decides to make a clearance himself and uh, finds a decent touch. A very nice clearance, too. That yeah, gets the bench involved early, see? That's right. But I think, yeah, if, if both sides can um, tidy up, tighten up a little bit of their kick chase, stop that counter-attack, and uh, also just probably be a little bit tighter on defence, uh, they'll be looking for that. As we see a, an early change there, Bridge Williamson, hometown hero and uh, local good sort on the field there in number 18. He's my favourite player. And uh, foot goes up there. And a target. As they spotted a little bit of space from behind, and Briggs puts in a lovely kick. Samoti takes it on the full. Bit of footwork. Hutchinson. Oh, McLeod, sorry, with a good tackle. A Great pill. He's in. And Joyce is going to go close. But he gets caught up there by Hutchison. Keeps it alive. And ball bounces kindly there for Nick Hyde, I think, who's on the field already. Replacement hooker. And Reeves picks that up to gain another couple of metres and create a bit more of an angle for the clearance, but great play there from the Heartland 15, and oh so close. Just saw Willie Wright go off the side of the screen there, looked to be holding a collarbone, holding a shoulder, so uh, 
If they, oh, there he is. He's, he's up again. He's dusted it off. He'll be tough as teeth. He's uh, got more yap in him than a miniature schnauzer on heat, but uh, he backs up that yap with a good bite too. So there's been left in the old boy just yet. So we've got a full line out now here for the Heartland side. Tell for Peter gets up high, and they've set a very good maul. Anderson's corner for the ball to get to the back. He's passed it from Fatava. Refs tell him to use it. Well, he gets on the ball. There he goes to Fafita. Good strong carry through the middle. Yeah, no thank you tackling that. Great ball available now for Briggs. He's going to have a wee inside step himself. Covers well by Hyde, but he's well in behind the line. Anderson with a great clean. Roberts to Nana. Pointing really right left. And a wee tip ball. And it just again. Again, another one of those duck duck goose moments. That's right, mate. Uh, just a good indication there of just yeah, new combinations and not having played a lot of footy together. The tip ball was on, but it just didn't look like the player was expecting it. Seems like they've uh, they've uh, stitched up there. Adam Williamson's out there. They've ruined fridge there. They've just waited for him to hit the ball right on the chest. Looks like Hay Horton just let that one go, whereas uh, Fridgy wasn't expecting it. But a great opportunity here for Fridgy to have a dig. Man eats, sleeps, and dreams about scrums. His favourite thing to do, so he's going to have a crack here at young Liam Pratt. Self-proclaimed best scrummer for the past three years, he's told me. Okay, interesting. Based on what metric you should, are you aware? Uh, his local club. <laughs> it's, uh, fair enough, too. Fair enough. Um, the development side, Canary development side, had a little bit of a wood over the Heartland side in that first half in scrum time. Although it wasn't anything too clear and obvious, so it'll be interesting to see if it, uh, well, obviously a tactical sub here by Coach Nigel Walsh. Get the old head of Fridgy in there, and the hit's good. Wish it comes a little bit from Heart, uh, the Heartland 15, but Canary hold. Cloud with a bit of a cross field, but good distance on it. Roberts Renata makes good ground, though. Finds Milani Thagi. He's been in two minds, but he has McLeod on. Shows him a clean pair of heels. Gets tidied up eventually by Reeves, who's absolutely everywhere. Briggs switches blind. Finds Roberts Renata, who has Rawlings on the outside. <laughs> Don't know how he's pulled that pass over there. A bit of a wizard. Not that ball. Done well. Anderson's tidied it up. Foot with a good oh. tip. And Joyce with a hell of a line. Doesn't he's know got what to two do. to beat. Too many options. Ah, oh, and he just gets stripped here quite nicely there from... Terence Graham, the share of tidies up. Nice clearance again. Heartland 15 looking very, very likely though, Sammy. Very likely. They're dangerous on those edges. They can just get the ball right, beat one or two. But then again, they just change of line. Yeah, impressive to watch. Young Joyce there with an outstanding line coming off the tip ball. It was very good. It looked like Canterbury were thinking they were going to go wide again, get to an edge, and they've just... Straight through the middle. Here comes a couple of changes there for the Heartland 15. Looks like Connor Anderson's going to make way for Bill Pino or Malpisi from Buller. And they're going to a five man. As Hay Horton gets up high. Ball to Briggs. Finds Horrocks. Again, a good carry. Going around the corner for Takataba. They're getting into their work, rolling up the sleeves. Big back ball here for Briggs. On an Anderson, he's going one-on-one. -on -one. Gets past Smith, but gets held up there by McDonald, who's found himself in at 13. Ball now for Wright. Finds Mole PC. Good tackle down low there from skipper Johnny Lee. Ball to space again, though, out wide. Yeah, a bit of a full pass there, unfortunately. Fletcher Morgan's first touch of the ball there. He's on for Simone. Number 11, they've made a quick wee substitution. Uh, Fletcher Morgan from the Swamp Foxes. Long way from the Thames Valley down here at, uh, in the High Valley. He is a long way from home. I wonder if he can handle the cold down this way. That's all right. Yeah, just a little bit of snow around. In saying that, though, as we've got a little bit of a break here for Joe the Power Taylor, getting a bit of tape on his boot to do absolutely nothing, uh, especially the way she's taping that. <laughs> um, that's, doing a bit. that's a Wayne really Tipton special, bit. that. But in saying that, like... It sort of beggars belief a little bit that we're playing footy at this time of year, whereas we normally play it in the howling uh, rain and cold and frost, doesn't it? Like, Obviously, we don't know what we're talking about, but it does seem like a, a good time to be playing footy. Oh, it's a great break, isn't it? These, of course, the forge are a bit happy. I think I've found myself at the bottom of a few rucks with all the weights on me, and there's a bit of water on the ground, and I am drowning. So uh, 
Fish are a bit happy the field's a bit drier. More conducive to, to running flowing footy, which is uh, what everyone pays the big bucks to watch. So That's exactly what we're seeing. Both 15s have got uh, two tries, so ball's getting wide. Ball's, uh, ball's getting put down as well, so great yeah. to see. Those fatties up front doing their job. They and are the, the pretty boys out wide are, are finishing it off, so oh, that's, that's what footy's boys. all about. There's some pretty boys in there. Up front the, too. Yeah, in the engine room, some of them. Yeah, Fridgey's quite pretty. Uh, it's scrum, scrum here after the forward pass from Joyce here to Canterbury. Ball goes down, but referee says use it. Shearer takes a wee dart himself, brings Rawlings onto it, I think. And we're going around the corner again. Reeves gets a wee outside line on for feet. Cloud wants it here. Going to go to boot again. Boot here to he ball. Goes. Yeah. Trying to exploit that backfield, but Roberts Tanana finds himself in good position again. Calls for the mark. The safe catch. Finds a reasonable touch up towards the 10 metre line. Canterbury ball here. First though for Nick Hyde. And himself out uh, representing Glenmark Chevy at the last couple of seasons after a storied career playing for the Polar Bears and then going up north and uh, cracking it for Northland too. So he brings a wealth of experience here for the Canterbury development side and just an all-round good footy player. Off the top, nicely Shearer darts. Finds McLeod at the back and a big long pass there for Graham. Finds Hutchison in a bit of space. Light on his feet, Hutchison, hard to tackle. Oh, had a real uses. Horrocks was doing a great job. He probably would have thought he might have done enough there, but referee says let the boys play. Ball's down for Shearer to Mama. I'm liking seeing Shearer and Cage line a lot. Like do a little tech see them with a wide. It's quite nice. It is. It's electric on his feet. It's Hutchison in space again. Hide in the channels. Reeves doing some good work, but that for feet are holding him up there. Ball's available though. Jaden Saar, the Shirley Viking. Good tough carry. Caleb Foot from the King Country making a yeah, and Joyce over the top there. The clean from the development side just wasn't good enough. And Joe the Power Taylor will bar uh, probably be asking for a little bit more tape so he can be a bit more effective on his boot there. Because he didn't do a great job of cleaning that one. No, no. He's in charge. Needs the other boot with a little bit more tape on it, I think. Even and out, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Just lost a little bit of power on that left foot. Right foot, maybe. Whichever one doesn't have tape anyway. There's a really good, well-timed relieving penalty here for the Heartland side. Gives Briggs the opportunity to take play up towards halfway. Which he does even better than that. That's a hell of a clearance. That's unreal. Not much angle to work with. And Sam Briggs has just shown exactly why South Canterbury are three on the trot and 4,600 games unbeaten. Because that's an outstanding clearance. And when you've got a man like that running the cutter, no wonder they're hard to beat. There's another couple of changes here. It looks like Connor Smith from the Kaipoi Club coming on for Canterbury Development. And there's that Tailunga, Waka Tailunga from South Canterbury. Yeah, looks like at number 17. Yeah, that's how you say that. Replacement Lucy Prop. He comes in. So a great opportunity here for um, the Heartland 15 to set up an attacking platform. Off the back of that wonderful clearing kick from Sam Briggs. See, they set the back three early here. That seems to be their most likely lift. Yeah, oh, they've gone. just missed their lift a little bit there. That boot tape. Yeah, that's all right. It makes them put in that tackle. Taylor sets it there. Ball now for Lee. Good carry. Shearer again. Release ball there to McLeod. He goes wide to McDonald. Finds Hutchison, who tough carry there with numbers in front of him. And... Uh, he had his time again, he'd probably take a wee right foot step there and come back in. But uh, good defence there from Roberts Granada. And I think it was Fletcher Morgan too, wasn't it, Percy? Yeah, it was. A good wee battle there from the 15s. I think uh, Roberts got one up there. He's 1-0. and oh. So another opportunity here for Mal PC. Been a lot of line outs early in this half. Yeah, just to get his timing right, just to try and get that cohesion with they simplify it a little bit, and they do. Hey, Horton goes straight up, comes off the top. The wide ball, and that's a great wee pill from Anderson to Fletcher Morgan. He gets himself on the outside of his man. A nice wee backdoor move, got a running. Would have liked to see the, the winger come in there and get involved, help maybe run a, run a cut, but 
Oh's Bessie here. Great cover there from McDonald coming from centre, and then he's put some great pressure on oh, still long. Horrocks at half back. He's made a real nuisance of himself there as McDonald, which he needed to because Cam Rawlings made uh, a pretty poor read there on the release ball on Fletcher Morgan. And uh, so, yeah, McDonald had a fair bit of work to do and he's done it well. So, Timmy Rawlings with a filthy wee mullet, no combo. Might have to buy Curtis McDonald or a stubby on the bus ride home if Curtis McDonald isn't driving. That is true, they the bus. Because he's a Sydney bus driver. So, you have to make sure he's not uh, driving the bus when he buys him that stubby. He is a young player, I believe it was his debut season this year, playing for Prem 1, playing for Maris Albion, the young Cam Rawlings. Teammates with, of course, Isaac Hutchinson out there, and Nick Shearer as well, and the, the power, Joe Taylor. All right. So, attacking opportunity now. A bit of rugby in the last couple of three minutes, three or four minutes, play between the two 40-metre lines, which uh, a lot of coaches these days don't like happening. The uh, big advocates for kicks, but... As long as there's footy being played, it's uh, got to give the people what they want, Timmy. I think they've noticed that they can get around. Them. There is weakness on the edges. That's true. Yeah, bit of a uh, unstable setup there, so the referee blows his whistle. Um, and there's always that wee bit of feeling out period when you make some changes, like a uh, whole new front row now for the Heartland 15. And um, it looks like uh, we've gone a wee way without noticing, is that? The change there, yeah, it looks like it could well be Josh Duckworth has come on as well as Nick Hyde for the Canterbury development. So I just thought Duckworth from the Ashley Club out there in North Canterbury. Um, so there has been a few changes made up front, so they just take a little bit of time to get things settled again. It's like they've got Cam Rawlings defending in, it, in that 10 channel. Balls available there for... That's sloppy out there off the eight. I think he's not that. Oh, oh, he's not the back, yeah. referee says, and ball's available now for George Reeves, who's uh, one of the players of the match so far, and this, if they had their time again, some of these fellas will probably want their time back, because that is uh, hardly a great advertisement for rugby. There's been another substitution as well, with Nick Shearer going off, and uh, Joel Lamb's come on to play at night. Mm. From the Burnside Club, Joel Lamb. So we're going to another set piece. And it looks like we've got another substitution here for the Heartland 15. I can tell for feet, it looks like he's making his way off. We've got Leo Pony, Leo Pino, sorry, Malpisi. And there we're straight up there for A. Orton, straight off the top oh, there for right. Hit him well, though. Defense was up. Not a great build there from Briggs. Slightly behind the man. And another one that's caught Roberts Renana on flat-footed, so he decides to put the toe to it. In the more infield. I don't know if he was aiming for there. Oh, the fist. Throwing that one to the floor. He's going to get rid of it. Yeah, she's gone a little bit messy the last couple of minutes. But that's all right. For feeder now, tidies it up. Wide ball here for Briggs. Bit of an opportunity in front of him, he think. But uh, closed off pretty quickly there for Josh Duckworth with a good chase. Lani Thagi here with a ball to for feeder. Find the a little bit of shape here, get it more controlled, tidy it up. Yep. No longer there. Look at carry off nine. Ball available here for my PC. Line speeds here, very impressive so far they from are. Canterbury. They're Picking up early, they're up quick. Nine. Well, Ooh. right brings Fletcher Morgan in. A bit of a high shot, I think. Get him well. Yeah. Tough one there for, I think it was to Mama. We're going to try something here. Put that well. They'll head back over. Good read from Curtis McDonald and referee brings him back. Uh, one just slightly above the shoulders, is it? Off the right, off yeah, offside. Off They're eager. They're very eager. You can see them creep forward a little bit. Too eager. Right. Well, he writes having his uh, dropping a few cents in there. Fair enough, too. Referees need all the help they can get, especially from half back to the captain. Yeah, they just don't get enough from the sideline. That's all right. Briggs finds a reasonable touch. Another great pause to 22. Mm -hmm. 
seen a pretty scrappy first 15 or so minutes here. He's got number 23 coming on, Josh Chalk. We think from the Prewilden Club, he's making his way onto the field for Canterbury Development side. They go to the back, but oh. skipper Johnny Lee gets up in front and makes a mess of it. Ball's available now for Canterbury Development, and a, just a big don't argue on for feeder from Curtis McDonald. Find himself in open space, and Rawlings gets a ball on the shoulder. Doesn't quite capitalise on it. Referee blows it up. He slowed his feet there once he got the ball. He looked for a support, but didn't look. Because there was another man trailing. Just put too much pressure on Cam Rawlings here. Forces the pass to go with a bit wayward. Did a gear to get quite messy out there. Mm. Good wee bit of individual play there from McDonald, though. Open them right up. Yeah, it just doesn't quite ice it in the end, unfortunately. We find ourselves in another series here. Reggie's certainly getting his money worth in the second half. Yeah, he's definitely having a bit of fun out there. Loves the scrum. Scrum to line out, line out to scrum. Uh, put in the hard yards of these boys, the boys up front. Looks like we've got Keenan Talmata on the park two from uh, from Poverty Bay. He's made his way on, I think, for Doug Horrocks. So, um, Timmy Joyce has gone to the blind side. Then Talmata. Talmata, sorry. Gone to the uh, Open side. There's a good scrum. Finds Fletcher Morgan in a, oh, great a pace world out there. of space. Breaks out breaks wide. There he breaking goes. tackles. Oh, he's and they've got the old right. dog. Uh, the old dog just doesn't quite have the legs that he used to. He was but keeping ball's up. still there for Roberts to Nana. Threw but a wayward ball over top of Fridge. He couldn't quite get, get up there. He's a bit short. Halunga has tidied it up. Got Tomata there with a carry. Put one off there. There's no half. Making it available. Mani Fagi gets in. Nine, Peter to Anderson. Anderson gets the ball on the man, so settles. Hay Horton with a wee pick and go. The man who started it all, Fletcher Morgan, needs to clean, shift some bodies. Oh, it was a great run from him, wasn't it? Got on the outside, put his wheels down, cut back in, beat a couple. That's enough. Can they, can they execute on it here? I've got advantage again. It looks like the Canterbury side are a little bit eager again. Be careful with their discipline, I think, here on the development side. They're just uh, getting themselves on the wrong side of referee Henshaw's uh, penalty count. On the wrong side of the law, they are. Mm. That looks like they're going to go for the touch, which is good to see. See the boys play. Go for another drive. Hit it with another full line out. First real scoring opportunity in the in the second half. Sorry, but, uh, a lot of footy play between the two twenty two. So there's been a lot of uh, end to end so far, and still no points down. So be interesting to hear if we can break that deadlock. Oh, front Joyce gets up, gets up tall, all set well, all available for Fridgey in the back. The wheel a little bit to the left here. Yeah? Going towards the sideline, which they don't like to do, but Fridgey's gone on his own, and he's, and he's got it. How's he done that? Low centre of gravity, and that's magic. That's what the Look hometown the crowd wanted to see. Look at the calves on him. Yeah. He can't stop that. We baby cows. They're almost full-grown cows. Outstanding work from Fridge Williamson. Brilliant to watch. He's uh, made a call to go on his own. Well, what was that little celebration there? Southern Stags, isn't it? Something like that, I saw. I think that. so. Been a few uh, celebrations for that mid-Canterbury team that have uh, yeah. been a bit questionable. No, he's done very well there as Adam Williamson. So excellent work there from the Heartland 15. They had an opportunity and they've iced it. So it, great work. First points of the second half. We've had to wait 20 minutes for it. Uh, we've seen very willing rugby in the first 20 minutes. But, uh, yeah, just a bit scrappy. But very, very good execution there. So the Heartland team take uh, their lead back out to seven points. First to, score. First to score after half time, semi. Always crucial. It's a very good sign. Always. That's what a coach wants. That's right. So, tough kick here again for Sam Briggs. Apart from his first one, none of them have really been that easy. Uh, so, yeah, tough angle here for him. Looks nice off the boot. Hutchie's unhappy with that one either. No goes, plays go up. Goes across the front by the looks of it. So we've got a game here, 24-17.
18 minutes to go in the second half. I think what Canterbury need to do here, they've just got to hold, hold that ball. They're trying to go through the middle of these bigger boys, but they're not really finding much. When they link it up out wide quite well, it's awesome to see it again on the outside, make meters, but they just need to hold the pill and work through it. That made no sense. What I was trying to say <laughs> was, they're not getting through these big boys. I mean, look at them. Yeah, Fletcher Morgan here takes a kick off from McLeod. He's the man on the ball at the same time, but does well. All here for right. Tomato calling for it. A tough carry there from Poverty Bay debutant. Sets up an angle there for right as he goes back. Got another change on. To wait and see, but again. Offside, they're pushing it. Canterbury development side just too eager on their line speed. Far too eager. That's uh, Lonnie Tomahuni from South Canterbury, who is an absolute weapon. Should work in a deck chair company because he just folds people for fun. Looking he, is forward, a solid, he is a solid player. Looking forward to seeing 17 minutes of damage done from Lonnie Tomahuni. Very strong. He'd be very hungry right now, I'd say so. Sitting on that bench and watching, and he wanted to get out there. Mm, it's an opportunity now. Good kick there from Briggs. Turn their way out of pressure. Turn their way out of trouble. Really simplified their line outs the last few. That's worked well for them again here at the Hartland side. All of Briggs. We've got a little bit of oh, interchange the there. Beautiful work. And Roberts Renata again finds himself in space. They overcommitted there and he just found a wee hole. Yeah, they've released because they've been hitting a lot in that midfield. Horrocks has found his way back on. He's been carrying a lot, but they've released this time and they've found themselves with a lot of space out wide again. Oh, brilliant way in and away from the replacement hooker. Gets the ball back inside. Willie he Wright. It. He's everywhere. Bounces Willie up Wright's for everywhere. him. Halunga here. They're riding behind them with the Heartland side. Ball now for Briggs. Off to Tomata. Briggs is uh, organising his troops. Good defence there from looks like Jack Coulthard who's found himself on the field. Briggs takes the ball flat and hard. Tackled there from Duckworth. All still available though for Wright. Advantage now for the uh, the Heartland side. Roberts Renata. We chip through. And it's got a deflection. Ah, oh, it's bounced tough. But he's out there. Would have been bounce. nice to see though. He got away, got away on the outside there. Would have been nice to see that 14 go over. Yep. And they had a wee opportunity one on one there, but the deflection didn't quite pay off. Offside again for the Canary boy. Referee. In a, in a situation like this, you don't really want to. Um, impact the game too much with cards and all those silly things. So good to see them not, but they are giving away a lot of penalties. I'm saying that. But that's all right. So we've got a, a looks like, I think, Ben Alexander from the Darfield Ducks. Darfield Ducks skipper has found his way on, has he? It looks like it from 17 for Canterbury Development side. We've got Aid Whale out there as well. Going well, the experienced campaigner. Not his first time, uh, not his first rodeo, that's for sure. It'll be interesting to see where he's fit in. Nigel Walsh should be calling on Dane Whale to, to ice the game and see it out as Willie Wright feeds the scrum. Good experience. Looks like Doug Horrocks is in Gets at eight. involved here. early here. We eight nine, and Milani Thuggy un. Oh, oh, that's a brilliant that's finish. finish. That's an outstanding finish. He's done outstanding work there. Just a simple eight nine. Sammy, but they've done enough to hold defenders, square them up, and then get on the outside. And an unbelievable finish there from Milani Thaghi from Wanganui. He tucked in his landing gear and took flight there, didn't he? He certainly did. Yeah. Brilliant to watch. And a well-worked try, and a well-deserved try, to be fair to the Heartland side. They've played most of the rugby this second half. Those Can penalties are being costless. Those offsides are getting into the wrong areas of the pitch. The Canterbury's letting them come in. Just giving them away. Discipline's killing them at the moment, so they're going to have to um, pull something out here for the last 15 minutes if they want to make this right. As Briggs with another tough conversion. He's not having a fun day out there, is he? He's no, really but this, to... that's what we've said at the start, Sammy. It's good to see the boys doing the work up front and the pretty fellas doing the, doing the finishing out wide, so that's what it's all about. That's uh, good practice for Sam Briggs, I suppose, going forward to the Heartland game this weekend against... Uh, New Zealand Barbarians second match down in Omaru comes in 
And he's got good. this one. An excellent kick. So the score goes out to 31 17. We 14 point buffer now for the Heartland side. A long way back here for Canterbury Development. They haven't really looked, so, looked like scoring this whole second half. But as we saw in that first half, Sam, they can pull something out of nothing. Go a long way. So Heartland side have to be clinical here. They find Briggs deep. Makes good contact. Great contact. Brilliant clearance. Just what Coach Walsh will be wanting after extending that lead. Takes play well inside Canterbury Development's territory. It is quite a boot down there. Nice position. Wide here for the line out. On the skipper. He fumbles it a little bit, but the referee decides to come backwards. Oh, Mulnahuni with a big shot. Throws the ball down. Ball's available now for Hyde. Only knows one way and he goes hard. Ball available here for Joel Lamb. They're going to carry there. There's been an Alexandra carry that one up. After a duck. Back we towards the cloud. Back for McLeod. McLeod finds Graham. Here it's finds a little bit. Has a nibble. Talking about four passes, but that's all right. Referee lets it go. So he should. I think there's no turbo here. That's right. Doing enough to slow the ball down to the Heartland side, but Reeves finds himself in a bit of space, and he bends the line, holds the offload. Again here for McDonald, who's proved elusive throughout the game. Plays a bit with his pace there. Good like defense. you see. Rawlings, he's not really going anywhere out there. Still gets quick ball, though. McDonald plays nine. Finds Hyde, who's getting through a power load of work in the second half. Tough nut here from Lamb. He gets it away. Reeves with another carry. Sets it as Bruce. McLeod barking orders at 10. Gets the pill. They're up early out wide. Finds Hutchison. No space outside him. So he steps back in. I would have got a need, got the ground got there. Got a need of ground. So referee said let him play. And I don't know if he can do that. No. no. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately there for Hutchison. He did enough to find, find the ground. But he set a ruck and there was no one over him. So... Always a tough one there for uh, uh, referees, and especially uh, Tom Mulhooney, because sometimes you get called for taking out the halfback, sometimes you don't. It's uh, just a bizarre one. He uh, flipped the coin with that one. That's right. All down to the interpretation, Percy, and referee Henshaw ruled that one correctly, I reckon. Not that that counts for anything, but... Uh, Not that you've been a ref before. Yeah, or that I know the rules, but it's good to see that... Uh, a, they weren't rewarded for not having anyone over the ball. So, again, very timely penalty for the Heartland side. And an excellent kick from Briggs to take the play deep inside the Canterbury Development Territory. So we walk in again. And, uh, complete misunderstanding here for the Heartland side. So, free ball here for Canterbury. Hutchison with a bit of space. Tips it nicely to Graham. He finds ruling, but that was not a nice tip at all. What was it's I saying? Time forward. Yep. What do I know? I don't know, you're watching a different game. <laughs> clearly, quite clearly. So things aren't just quite uh, flowing here for the Canterbury side. And it's uh, the 14 point deficit is getting further and further away the more rugby they play inside their own half. Yeah, even when they get opportunities like that, I mean, how better can you get? I mean, Hartland threw the ball straight to them. So uh, I would have liked to see them get wide or at least take it down and work with it a little bit more. But they've uh, pushed it too much and lost it. That's all right. So another scrum now. Looks like Leroy Niels has made his way on, so the skipper's uh, put on a captain's knock, and he's uh, earning a well-end uh, orange and uh, wee water. And Leroy Niels from the Swamp Foxes finds his way on. Very talented halfback in his own right. So feeds it to Briggs, finds Roberts Renato, who releases to Milani Thagi, but a great read there from Charlton, is it? It is. Yeah, he's read that well, and he stopped it in its tracks. And Niels just finding fridge on a great hole. Hard to tackle, low centre of gravity, and he finds good metres. Kneels again. Roberts Renata with a kick, but McDonald's read that, as has Charlton. Finds Graham looping round. Tomato makes a tackle. Takes him down. Now with a little dart. Falls off. Falls fortunately here for Alexander. Again there for Lamb. Finding McDonald. Trying to find some space on that short side. Gets wrapped up by Morgan, but it falls kindly. Again, Morgan all over that ball. 
intent on not giving the development side any quick nut. Alexander with a wee show and a wee go. Bends the line slightly. Play out hall, puts one down. Picks it up nicely though. Nice backdoor play. Read there from Anderson, but Hutchison gets it away anyway. Rawlings has his man on, but Milani Fagi's up to it. He's reading him like a book, I reckon, all day here. Rawlings hasn't seemed to get on the outside at all. Hutchison in the right spot, the right time. Ball's come loose here. And won the ball back. Anderson makes up for his wee misread before and a brilliant wee bit of work over the ball. Bridgie says, no way I'm giving that. He tucks it and makes good metres. Ball available for Neils and Briggs just does the smart thing and puts boot to ball. Hutchison with a good bit of skill there. Traps the ball nicely. Nice calm. Yeah, he's looked dangerous from the back. Chase line, not overly quick, but reasonably well together. So development do it, uh, Hartland do enough, sorry. Lamb spots a bit of space. Is that? No, not a 22. Look very close. But it's nice we uh nice we chip down a little bit of space, put them in a different side of the field. Odd decision though when you're down by 14, Sam. Yeah, well, I mean, I did say hold the ball, but what do I know? Well, you just said it was a nice kick too, though. Well, I've gone back to my word. <laughs> ball line out called here for the Heartland 15. By the looks of it. Well, a bad kick would have been if we went out of the ball. True. True. At least he's done that right. Uh -huh. Oh. What's well, it's, worked, it's, work, it's worked out for them, though. It's worked out. There's a line-out win, which uh, you don't need to see the replay to know that they win it. Ball back to Briggs. Finds decent metres, but doesn't find touch. He finds McLeod. McLeod into Graham. Graham across to McDonald. McDonald has his man on, but Roberts Renata's up to it. Getting help there from Milani Thagi, who finishes it off. Oh, he's all over that there. Had to release, been told by the ref. Good line there from Connor Smith. Kai boy man. Lamb darting out at half back. McLeod has his man on, but Horrocks is up to it. Gets it off the deck. Pops the wee ball up. Pops it up there to Duckworth. Alexander there to clean. We have got players strewing across the ground. It looks like there's a sniper operating from a, a bloody scissor lift somewhere out there because there's players on the deck across the field. I think it's just cramp. I think it's just cramp. It's the high altitude, mate. Yeah, it's the high altitude. Exactly it's right. the thinnier. I told you it was going to get to them. And it looks like the water carriers are coming from everywhere. They've lifted the legs up to put blood back to the head. Yeah, fair enough too. That George Reeves. Fair enough. If anyone's going to cramp up, George Reeves should. The amount of work he's got through. Been everywhere, hasn't he? He has. Players getting a bit of a break here in between the set pieces that we've had throughout the second half. The Get more la on the boot. Lactic acid's obviously built up a bit. A bit of pickle juice and some magnesium tablets and a bit of cold spray and the boys will be right though. Delicious, isn't it? Pickle juice. So after all that, I'm pretty sure that uh, it was knock-on or forward pass potentially from the Canterbury development side, so... New Zealand Heartland side will get it back. Granted, it'll be deep in their own end. And I think both benches have been emptied, so there's not that many options here for two players suffering from cramp. No relief. Oh, he won. Uh -huh. Well, he's coming off. He just can't rub it out. Oh, they're both coming off. Too. So it looks like the development side will have to play with uh, 13, finish with. Oh, ball's gone out, so it's Canterbury ball, and Hyde finds his mark, as he always does. They nice. set them all. Gonna have to go a fair way, our Canterbury development, and a good counter shove comes here from the Heartland side. But Hyde gets it away. Pressure coming on from Niels. Lamb gets the ball. Oh, oh. McLeod, just half a gap, but gets it knocked loose. Shear has been brought back on. Put him out somewhere on the on the edges. They would have loved to have uh have Tyne and Sour Smith out there. They needed an extra back reserve. Yeah. Him going down in the warm up of Arbin. Left one man short. That's all right. Mm. So Hartland ball here. Deep in their own territory, but uh Hart in the middle of the field. So it opens up both sides for a clearance for Briggs. 
They might go. They might run it here. Might be cheeky. Mm, don't know if anyone's left to run. They're all out on their feet. Solid scrum here for the Heartland side. Williamson's made a real difference. And Dane Whale, the old head. Experience. The elder statesman of the squad. Puts it deep. And uh, Graham has no choice here with Milani Thuggy with a great chase. Giving him no options. So he's taking play right up to the um, 10 metre line. With only a little bit over five minutes to go. If they're going to do something to Hartland, uh, sorry, the development side, they're going to have to do it pretty shortly. Go to another five man. The Canterbury side. Go deep. Goes up to Take the skipper, down. Lee. Got Joe the Power Taylor back on the field. Probably got another lot of tape on his boots, so he's going to be all right. Lee he's comes around the more. corner. And we switch back his on by the looks of it. Yeah, and oh. it, again. All the deck. It's just that lack of cohesion. Niels picks it up nicely, and he finds some good ground here with his kick. Hoping this doesn't go too deep, and it won't. Hutchison has to chase back, and not too many options on, but to find touch. But again, it looked like Jack Coulthard was the um, man to receive that ball, but he decided he didn't want a bar of it, and the power just wasn't quick enough to adjust. He's uh, grasped it cold. So Roberts Renata, uh, uh, sorry, Roberts Tanana, Renata Roberts Tanana with uh, an absolute blinding That's debut. Tanana. Roberts Tanana. That's what I said, Roberts Tanana. Uh, he's earned himself a decent break and uh, he's done great work. So well done to him on his debut. And he's uh, a much tidier looking line out there for the Heartland side as Horrocks takes a tough carry. Yeah, they finally uh, jumped on one of them. Got all cut off the deck. We got around the corner here. A little bit more understanding though. For the Heartland side, it looks like goes himself there. Probably looked like they've spent a little bit more time together. Coulthard there's. I think he's been a little hard done by there. He has earlier in the in the game. Jackson Henshaw was rewarding those uh, those players having a crack over the ball, and he's been quite harsh there on Coulthard. But momentum's a funny thing in footy. It is. I've never had it. And Briggs. Another opportunity here to get him deep into the Canary Development Territory, and he takes it. Uh, like you said, Sammy, the line-out uh, has been a bit scratchy there for the Heartland side, but that last one, at least someone got off the deck, so it's an improvement. They are going somewhere. It's all right. Good opportunity. Yeah, simplified it nicely. Tomato at the front. Set well. Bridgie with a double meat pie. Be paying big odds. But they've got to roll on. You wouldn't bet against them at this oh, rate. He would not. not it's going. It looks like it's very likely... He's done He's it. He's done it. He's done He's it. He's absolutely done it. The hometown hero, the crowd favourite. Oh, they're not happy about that. No, he's not at all. Connor Smith. Hey, what I am. I'm pretty happy about it. Coming together there with Hay Horton, but it doesn't really matter. The arm's gone up and he's pointed to the spot. Fridge Williamson. The double. He's um, Neil Brown, the mayor of Ashburton, is very, very lucky there's not an election coming up this year because there's every chance Fridgey's going to get that if it was. It'd have my vote. Absolutely. There's two meat pies there for our man Fridge. Do you think he's had a bit more than two in his time? That's, well, that's probably fair, to be honest. It's, uh, yeah, that's the icing on the cake that the Heartland side were, uh, were looking for. Another tough kick here for Sam Briggs. Absolutely. Whereas. We looked at that game after half-time, Percy, and uh, she was a real arm wrestle and some good try scored and it's sort of a uh, bit of a seesaw ding-dong battle, but this second half has been all, all New Zealand Hartman, really, hasn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. I looked at the start and saw Canterbury coming out firing and they just slipped off a little bit and uh, Hartland just stayed quite strong, quite solid. They found themselves on the, the wrong side of the penalty count in the second half, particularly, and without any ball... All trying to make a difference and uh, a great conversion there from Sam Briggs. All trying to make a difference and uh, win that ball back and change momentum. They've unfortunately just found themselves a bit too keen. And, yeah, it's cost them. It certainly has. But fair play to the Heartland side. They haven't spent a huge amount of time together, but they've been very, very clinical when it counted. It's uh, been a pretty impressive display so far. The cloud gets us all underway again. Finds foot by the looks of it. Ball available for Niels. Put a wee release on, and it looks like they've got space out wide. Briggs going to have his man on. 
Oh, finds Malani Fagi. Look at him go. Cuts Absolutely. Hot knife through butter. Ball on the inside to Morgan, and this is the icing on top that we've, they were after. That's an outstanding finish. It was, but he ran away from the sticks. I've been thinking Sammy's had it hard from the corner every time, and he ran away from the sticks here. I thought he was going to give him another kick from the corner. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant finish. And uh, it's been the story of the day a little bit. Doing the work up front, although they didn't have to do a huge amount of work up front. Doing the work up front, shortening the line, and then finding space out wide. So, excellent work. And the debutante from the Swamp Foxes gets himself a double, does he? Does he get 2-2? Two -two? No, this is first. No, this is first. Bridgie's got a double. Roberts Tanana got a double. Yeah, he just held a support line. He waited, waited just to capitalise on his uh, teammate there doing all the work for him. Running through, nice line. Ended off line, goes through. Yeah, for his support. Milani Thagi with a great run and then a great ball on the inside. So this might well be the game. And he's pulled it. Hooked it to the left there. He's hooked it to the left. But that's the game set and match, Semi P. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to be a part of it. Um, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Sam. Oh, thanks for the invitation. I've enjoyed every minute. It's been a great experience. Nice game to watch. Nice day out here in Bethan. Yep. Full credit to both sides. It's been uh, very impressive to see that uh, two sides that have sort of probably haven't spent a huge amount of time together um, get together and be so willing and uh, have a crack like they did. And I think it's also per important to note that these sorts of fixtures, especially anything involved with New Zealand Heartland, um, are important. We touched on it at the start that uh, Heartland footy is the pinnacle of grassroots footy and it's been said before and it'll be said again grassroots footy is the, the lifeblood of New Zealand rugby and these sorts of things are, are pretty important I think whether they're these games or Heartland tours or whatever like we've heard plenty of times uh, about those professional fellas what, they, what it takes to make it and how they get through their day and, and what they sort of do but the story about the, the tradie or the farmer or the young professional that slogs his guts out on the tools or at the gut, at the coal face for eight to ten hours a day and then has to run 20 Henny Mullers at night because they've dropped the ball that many times at training. That story probably doesn't get told as well as it could be. So that's why these Heartland things are, are so important and uh, hopefully they can uh, carry on. And, and they will carry on, obviously, this Saturday. Uh, Whitestone Stadium down there in Omaru. The New Zealand Heartland side have to back up and play New Zealand Barbarians. So that'll be awesome to see. And, uh, yeah. Long may they reign. Thank you very much.